Well, hello there! In this toy view, this is actually going to be massive because you know why? I've just came back from residential college and mind you, look at the amount of stuff that I've actually just got myself ready for a pre-Christmas toy view. Sorry if the camera does feel quite a bit, how would you say it, low quality. Now before I should actually start to basically get along with this toy view, there's one thing I need to shout out real, real fast. Oh, that's just great! I least all that one man this truck with nowhere to go! There you go. That's the motto that we've all been waiting for. But yes, let me try and go ahead and take a look at some of the various stuff that we've got there. Obviously, uh, Christmas 2020 is going to be very different. And, um, yeah, it does sound pretty different though. And um, what take a look at these two Christmas cards later. One of them features uh, CDI Link from the Legend of Zelda CDI games. And, um, yeah, pretty amazing though. And I got some pony themed toys. I uh, got some jungle themed toys, uh, tropical animal products though. But the one which I feel like is going to be ultimately crazy are the seagulls! Right over there! And I've also got this cool looking, how would you say it? Uh, Super Australian Rules. Yes, it's basically. I wonder who's that kangaroo fellow there, Lloyd Fangaroo. That's his name there. If I show you this one there, it looks pretty nice though. Uh, it doesn't have any artwork at the back. But it's just got a very simplistic writing of artwork by, well, you know who I am. Basically, it's Ivan Lee. But obviously, uh, a lot of the toys and a lot of the merchandise you see there were actually done uh, pretty much a combination uh, before and after my time at college. So, in fact, um, obviously, these toys here have been made, well, let's just say, um, this week, though. Uh, probably, uh, I'll obviously say the later part of this week. The pony toys here have been made in November of this year, though. Obviously, though, in November. It was actually in November, obviously, though. I've only made three products there. And the seagulls. Of course, the seagulls have made them, like, before and after um, college, though. In fact, um, many of the seagull products I did, they were actually during self-isolation. Oh, sorry, what was I saying? In fact, a lot of the seagull products particularly the ones with the um, sea creatures on them, or fish. Most of them were made during my time self-isolating in early December or late November. So that was quite a contrast whenever you think about it, of course. So, and of course the Christmas cards. <laughs> I mean, 2020 is going to be a very different year for Christmas. In fact, it's been such a diabolical yet atrocious year for Christmas, I bet you. But, um, yeah. I hope you guys have a very safe Merry Christmas. I know it's going to be very different because of COVID. But um, this video is also going to get extremely long because look at the amount of products here. I feel like I'm going to struggle at every single product that I obviously have to review. But um, and once again, the camera is not really focusing that well. So apologies for all. But that is what I've actually got along the way. Wow, what a long intro. Let's move on to something real first. Okay, this first product we're going to take a look at, out of all products, or should I say, the first cap of the rank is, of course, this chimpanzee small horde 5 pack, which costs about £9.50. I don't know how poorly drawn the chimpanzees are, particularly the arm. <laughs> That's a very wonky looking arm on that chimp, right? You might have to go to the doctors for that one. And um, this is the back of the packaging here. Oh my! <laughs> that is actually very. Very inappropriate day. Mind you, um, that is not very kid friendly day. You know, a monkey or a chimpanzee showing its bum though. Ew, that's very nasty. And oh my goodness me, also, look at this! Look at that! Actually, that reminds me of the, um... Oh yeah, so what was that thing in Family Guy? Evil Monkey! Obviously, that's the Evil Monkey from Family Guy, that's what I was thinking of, but, um... Yeah, it's quite interesting though. It's also perfect for a jungle scene, which is pretty nice to say. You know what's also uh, a bit scary to say about the flip out toys is, is that um, as we come close to Christmas and in recent times during autumn and winter of this year though, toy prices have actually crept on a bit higher there and they're actually getting a lot more expensive than I would actually expect though for the rest of 2020. Like in the spring and summer, toy prices were exceptionally below average, they were cheaper. But um, yeah, I'll, I'll probably say 
It's all due to the fact that temperatures are getting colder and a lot more cooler, which is probably one of the biggest factors that I really hate a lot though. But yes, this is a 2021 license flip that product though. Uh, obviously, which is, you know, interesting to say, but well, obviously whenever I think of 2021, it's not going to be as great as 2019 or 2018, but, you know, obviously it will be better, but good, but um, not so good though. Not as good, but a bit better, as I would say, hey? Okay, so here are the chimpanzees. I also want to let you know that I'm very sorry for taking so long on my YouTube channel. I'm also very um, sorry for basically uh, neglecting this channel for a very long time because, well, I was at college, uh, busily doing stuff there. And I actually didn't do any animations at, um, at residential because, um, well, obviously, um, obviously December has been way too short. And another thing, December 2020 has been way too short for me because, well, obviously, whenever I think of December, it's just that it's basically, you know, the last month, though, for education, though, but it's also, well, the last month of the year, though. But, anyways, who are the chimpanzees that we've got, though? And, uh, also, I just want to let you know that because I've self-isolated this year's December, um, I got a funny feeling, and I didn't do any animating day, which was pretty disappointing, but, I'm um, just glad I'm home here. Okay, so, so here are the, oh my goodness me, sorry for my sloppy talking though, but, um, here are the chimpanzees, we've got, oh goodness me, how come they're the same colour though? Obviously, one of the best things about those, oh, a bit of a domino action here, one of the best things about those primates is that you can stand like this, or you can stand them like that, although not all chimps can do the same tactic, they just... That's weird. Oh my goodness. Oh, that one stands on its knuckles like a gorilla. Oh my goodness. This is King Kong before he was King Kong. <laughs> oh well. Now uh, those monkeys, they just... No, sorry, they're actually apes though. Chimpanzees. They just don't stand that pretty much well though. But, um... Yeah, they look quite nice though. Obviously, um... I don't know what it is, but maybe... Those chimps, or it could be a bonobo of some sort though. Actually bonobos are different species of chimp. Um, it's so weird though, those designs though. I've got a funny feeling. Um, they're not too bad in design though. Obviously I've seen chimps at the zoo when I was in Malaysia and also in Dudley Zoo. In fact I've been to Dudley Zoo recently though and um, they have captive chimps like those five there. But Nevertheless, they look quite nice though. Perfect for a jungle scene. Uh, obviously, look at the ID tunnings as well. If I turn to the other side, it looks pretty amazing though. It looks like they've got pig noses though. Yeah, they're sort of snout though. It looks like a pig's face though, but um, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's how a chimpanzee would actually look like though. That sort of design though, I believe though, but uh, nevertheless. Uh, look quite great. I could do a 12 pack though, just to represent the amount of chimps there and how successful these animals are. And um, just goes to show you that these guys are a classic example of an endangered species that we all know and love. Let me move on into something a lot more, well, a lot more moist, uh, a lot more hydrational. Uh, this one here is called the Tropical Indian. Western Reef Egret Dark Morph Fishing Flock 12 Pack, which costs about 18 pounds. Now, what's strange about this product is, is that although I've done a, a product about the Western Reef Egrets before, though this is obviously a product that contains a lot of the Dark Morph Egrets inside, though. And if I turn the back of the packaging here, you can start to see this. Yeah, it looks quite interesting, though. Also, it's very worthy to note that this packaging is very similar to the Goldfinch product that I did there. I think it was a 12 pack which in a sense that the original envelope died but then was stuck into another envelope to make it as basically what it is though just a product reused with another envelope though I've also did a ponies theme product which also suffered the same fate as well um, I might be totally wrong though but um, yeah the tropical Indian Western Reef Egret Dark Morph Fishing Flock 12 pack let's take all we have oh my goodness me I think it's gonna be um, pretty hard to unpack because of the fact that yes 
It's pretty much an envelope stuck on top of another envelope day. Come out to come. Out to come. And, um, yes, it's gonna get pretty hard day, but, um, yes. Let's see what we have inside there. Oh, we've got some egrets. Uh, they come. I actually went into Sanwell recently on Sunday, which is, of course, the day that I'm making this video today, Sunday the 20th of December, and not September of 2020. Okay, here are the little soldings you get from this product here, which looks really nice today, obviously, though. And we've got some supplies of paper, and there's a door knocking outside. Yeah, sorry, I had to jump cut this one here, though, because obviously. There was some sort of person knocking at the door though. Obviously my parents were just knocking at the door, probably my father though, but um, yeah, it doesn't matter though. There was some supplies of paper here and a couple of envelopes. Oops, sorry, I've just bumped a dehumidifier though. And um, I did show you one of the sardines early on in the video though, which was quite nice though. And there's another one. Okay, so I want to wash my pants and trousers tonight though because, well, Obviously, I did take a poo, but yes, uh, I think my um, my pants are clean now, my trousers are clean now. Well, I'm pretty lazy to just go to the washing machine and just wash my clothes, so because, well, obviously, uh, I don't know if my area has got a, a washing machine, I don't know if my house has got an actual washing machine, but oh well, it's pretty much how I am there. And nevertheless, I've got another one of these. Okay, that's all the sardines done. Obviously, I need to maybe wash my pants and my trousers because, well, there was a lot of feces there. And, ugh. Uh, in fact, I'm not going to talk about that one again because, well, I've just disinfected my trousers there and um, pretty much cleaned it for, I don't know, for an eternal amount of time, I believe, though. But, um, okay, so here's one of the Western Reed egrets, though. Obviously, um, yeah, that looks pretty really nice. So it's pretty much I would obviously find on these birds too. It's a dark morph, not dark morph of Star Wars though. But um, there's the name here, Western Reef Egret. Well, some people call them Western Reef Herons. Pretty much interesting. It's in the same genus as all the other birds. So there's another one there. In fact, uh, it's not too bad. Eh? And the way it's been designed, though, it looks. Pretty cool looking, there's what we have there. Western Reef Egret. Okay. And there's another one. Awesome. And uh, pretty much they've got the same eye styles that you find on, you know, on the other herons there. They look pretty nice though. And, um, yeah, that looks very nice and interesting, I have to say, eh? These sort of, uh, very nice designs though. Eh? Aesthetic designs. Quite cool indeed though, apart from the fact that this side in here looks pretty much, looks like it's got a bit battered, but yeah, looks pretty nice though. Sadly, um, obviously the main factor about these products is, is um, although the detailing is not that great, well, it is an expensive product, which is obviously one of the biggest gripes I've ever had with flip-flap products today. It actually feels like, whenever flip-flap products are now getting expensive, it just feels like how Australia sells their products though, because, well, in Australia, uh, they have one of the most expensive toy prices ever though, which is uh, a real concern for what I can work out there, eh? but this product's okay. Okay, I'm not going to jump cut the, this section here, because we've got another product there, which is also tropical themed. It's the Tropical Indian Spot Bill Dabbling, or should I say, Tropical Indian Spot Bill Duck Dabbling Flock 12 Pack. And um, I can't see the number there. Oh, actually, I can. <laughs> Wasn't focusing that well, eh? £17.95 or £18. That's basically five pence away from that sort of price, though. There's the back of the packaging there. Very Indian like because you can start to see the lotus there, which is, of course, the national flower of India. And uh, the reason why I've made this product is because, well, most of India is tropical. But there's also other habitats or biomes across India. You've got temperate on the north, uh, you've got semi-arid, desert, okay, that's probably about it there, but most of India is tropical. And um, it doesn't always have to be a wet tropical area, like in, um, what's, oh my goodness, like the Western Ghats, that's one place in India, which is, I'll record it as a monsoon climate, tropical monsoon climate. 
And um, yeah, they look really, really nice. So, and um, obviously, I might bring in a, a very familiar looking lily. Just give me a jump cut, and I'll be right back. Because well, the lilies that you can see there don't look like actual lilies. Okay, uh, I'm now back already though. Uh, with those lilies there, they're just well, cheap, cheap, cheap looking. Um, as you say, flowers they're in design though. They just look nothing like a lily though. They just look a very my goodness me, I don't know what I'm saying here, but they just look like a very weird, well, obviously a very generic piece of flower that floats in the water. Obviously they are obviously crafted with, you know, paper and um, just made into some sort of weird blitz base. Um, origami water lily though with some sort of weird flower like raging going on there. It's sort of weird, I don't know what I'm talking about, but... They just don't look like an actual water lily from India though. If I bring in this one here, da 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 I'm not sure I say da 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 that one there is pretty much on how a lily would actually look like. Obviously, expectation versus reality. I can make a real good meme out of that one, eh? But um Yeah, it's actually not too bad though. It looks like it's missing a, a petal or something, but um yeah, I've just made it though, just to look like an actual lily though, but um, it doesn't look too bad. And um, here's the underside of it. In fact, I've actually done this product around, when was it, July of 2020? Or was it August 2020? I can't remember though. Obviously it was made during the summer, but it looks a bit though with those colours, like so. It looks very tropical looking. Okay, apart from that water lily and all... You know, the other crappy lilies that we've got though, which nothing in a sense that it just, oh my goodness. I just don't know what I'm saying here, but these flowers there, they just don't look like a lily. They just look nothing like a lily. But anyways, let me take a look at the Indian spot bill ducks, which look pretty interesting. There is an eastern rose, which is from like um, China and Japan and Korea, but um, these are the Indian ones. Which is nice, so I picked these guys though because they're more tropical. And uh, let's take what we have. They've got a big colour of yellow at the front and grey. There's a very weird reddish pinkish mark next to the eye there, which is actually in front, obviously. There's the very nice uh, wing tips there, or the wing markings, which look like that though. Obviously, it's the inner wings, which look like that. The feet are orange, but they can also be a bit of a coral red as well though, it's another colour I also think of though and like the African yellow billed duck sorry if I'm sounding a bit rough though because I haven't been doing any toy views throughout the rest of my life in well, for pretty much a long time though um, yes, these guys have got like either a green or a blue super... Uh, what was I saying? I, I should have never said the word supercilian, it's actually more like speculum oh well, that's just me eh? Hopefully I don't have any signs of, uh, you know, obviously I was actually thinking of one person who actually, um, oh my goodness, I'm actually starting to feel like I'm doing an impression now. I have dyspraxia! And, um, yeah, that's pretty much, um, comes from a person that is, uh, pretty much familiar. Um, but I'm not gonna name that person because if I did name that person, well, that's gonna offend that person watching this video though. But anyways, these ducks here have got like blue, which is in that shade, or green, which is in that shade, speculums. Uh, they look quite nice though, it's very similar to the African yellow billed duck in that sort of manner though. And apart from that, these guys also are pretty much mallard like though as well though, because, well, they belong to the same genus, uh, Anis, which is uh, Dublin ducks. Obviously, that's the Latin word or the scientific name for these birds though which looks very, very nice though. Sort of amazing, and these guys could literally um, uh, be amazing though, not only for the fact they're quite a, an amazing species of duck, but they're also quite interesting for the fact that whenever there's a drought or a monsoon, they can fly into anywhere where water is present. Okay, these are pretty much done, and um, so are these crappy lilies, or should I say lotuses. Why do I get confused now? I mean, obviously, when I'm inside residential college, though, I just lose all that sort of confidence that I've got now. Like, in a sense, when I come back, 
all of that confidence doing since that toys is missing now. But um yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and pack them like so. Okay, the tropical products are obviously done though, and so is this water lily there. In fact, this is the second time I'm showing this product here. In fact, I can do this one here. Okay, it's um, gone off right into where the radiator is. I try and move it, well, basically away from that radiator into somewhere else so that it can't get incinerated into ashes. Because I'm going to do a jump cut. Okay, I just want to let you know that when I was putting those products away, the boxes have actually been moved into that section there. They used to be on that section there. Obviously, there's a radiator right over there, though, so if I kept the boxes for pretty much for a very long time, though, well, that's going to catch both the products and also the box on fire, which in a sense that if the temperature gets really hot on that radiator, though, that's going to engulf all of my beautiful toys like that, though, and I really ha basically have to say I really hate seeing that, though if it was on fire, turning into ashes day. But anyways, uh, let me take a look at the Pony Fiend products like so day. Sorry if I'm talking a bit terribly though because of the confidence I've lost there. And I'm going to take a look at this one here. Ooh! Obviously, um, I wonder what this is. Let's take a look. Miscellaneous Background Pegasus Ponies 5 Pack. Or should I say, Miscellaneous Background Pegasus Ponies Small Hood 5 Pack. Yep, cost about £7.90. Uh, let's look at the back of the packaging here. There's not much artwork there, which is very, very strange, though. Usually they're highly detailed, but uh, they look very, very nice. Though. I can't remember all of their names there, but um, they look pretty amazing. All of them are mares in the sense that they're basically a female horse, and it's quite nice, though. Obviously, I'd love to make more and more of these guys, though. I should say girls, though, because it's a girly thing toy. And also, the ponies in that product are female. Okay, let's see what we have. Oh yes, and uh, once again they've got the same sort of design like that with those small looking eyes that um, obviously people can just complain about because, well, they're just designed in a very strange way though. Obviously we've got this pony here, whose name is Sasha Flash, because obviously um, there's a cutie mark which looks like so. And the cutie mark looks just a bit too big though. Okay, so, and the wings as well, they're just a bit too big, which, uh, obviously, that's, I would just say, it's not really good for, uh, for that sort of design for me, I eh, because, well, oh, I mean, the cutie should have been a little bit more smaller, though, a lot more smaller than that, because, well, if it wasn't a lot more smaller than that, well, yeah, this would have never happened, though, eh, just to cover, like, the lightning bolt cutie mark, say, eh, but, um, yeah, it's sort of a very, uh, bit of a faulty design, but, uh, in my opinion, but, um, uh, it's okay, I suppose, eh? it's quite an interesting design, I suppose, eh? uh, let's move on to something else, let me take a look at this pony here, this is Sun Shower Raindrops, which is, of course, a yellow coloured Pegasus, I almost think a Fluttershy, for the looks of it, though, and sadly, I can't see the name Sun Shower Raindrops in this one here, which is, a very weird lie there, I should have placed that one there. I'm going to have to look at anywhere else. No, I can't see a name on that pony though, but um, yeah, that is Sunshine Raindrops. Uh, very interesting detailing of eyes, like that. Very interesting detailing of the eyes that look like that. Okay, once again. Oh, great. I'm just talking quite a bit roughly though because of what happened at um, Residential. I think. Um, I've lost all the confidence now, but um, love the main styles, uh, love the um, hair styles on the head though, and the neck as well though, which looks pretty much amazing though. My goodness, I've got a whole bunch of toys to take a look at, particularly the sea guys there. Uh, but I'll try and get over it all by myself though. There's Derby Hooves here, okay, and it's even got a very weird name there. In fact, it's almost sounding like the trademark that you'd normally find on Marvel Pony toys. JB Hoobs. Obviously, it's clear to say that JB Hoobs is well known for those very weird cross eyes. Or should I say, dopey looking eyes where one eye faces the other way, like so. In fact, Dopey is meant to look like that, a very cursed version of Rainbow Dash. And um, obviously, Dopey Hoobs obviously tends to have cutie marks which look like that. 
Okay, so it looks very, very nice. Well, she looks pretty much nice as I would obviously expect her. And um, here's the other side. Very weird design on that pony there. Okay, so it's not that bad though, but um, yeah, it does look pretty nice though. Okay, so it looks quite nice though. Very interesting design. And that tail as well. Very interesting design on that tail as well. It's, I'd say it's A OK, I believe though. And um, what other ponies have we got there? Oh, we've got uh, White Lightning, obviously there. Uh, she's a fine looking pony there because she's got the lightning bolt on her cutie marks, like so, you know, her cutie marks like that on the back. Bam! That is amazing. In fact, I might try and show you how the things look like there. And it's not too bad though. Okay, so it looks quite interesting, that sort of design there. I mean, it's quite interesting. This is basically a far cry to what I actually created back in 2016 before I made my FFAP channel in 2018, which was a bit disappointing though because, well, I should have made this channel well, a lot more early in the summer though. But anyways, here is White Lightning, which looks like that there. Okay, so it's very nice. I'm not sure, not sure how clearly you can see it there. It's okay. And um, the eyes as well, the face. Oh my goodness, it's very kooky that sort of face though, especially the mouth and the eyes. And then um, she's also interesting for a pony like that. Okay, I love the um the iris as well, the blue iris detailing combined with the um mane and tail, which is quite nice though. Let's take a look at Murray Murray, which is of course our last pony, which in a sense she looks like that. That green design, obviously though. And uh, I'm going to take a look at her again because, well, we want to see the overall design. And she looks pretty much interesting, that sort of design, I say. Obviously the eyes, they look okay, and light white lightning, and derpy hooves, and, um, oh, that's the wrong pony, eh? Uh, some shadow raindrops, and in fact the eyes correlate to the mane and the tail's colour, which is very, very nice to hear, though. And the uh, Murray Murray's mane is also very, very nice. There's her key mark, which looks like so. There's the other side. My goodness me. In fact, I might be ready to do a 12 pack of these Pegasite ponies, like so, in the future, I hope. Which will be totally and utterly amazing, eh? Really awesome. And I might show you her name that looks like that Murray Murray. And uh, I think that's about it, though. But before I shall move on into. The next two pony thing products, I'm going to go ahead and put a name on Sandshower Raindrops. In fact, I'm going to do it now, and uh, oh my goodness. Sorry about the rough talking I'm literally having at the moment though, because, well, obviously, when I go away from home though, it's such a huge contrast, and when I come back, it's, it's such a, oh my goodness, I don't know what I'm saying here, yeah, there's the name here, yeah. in place like so. Yeah, it's just that um, whenever I come back from from Carnage, though, it just makes me feel completely and utterly different, though, but in a very bad way, though. But um, anyways, that's that product done. I'm going to move on to the next the fat product, though. In fact, oh my goodness, I'm so, so dreadful now. And um, yeah, I'm pretty much done with this um, with that product, obviously, though. Oh my goodness. No matter how rough I am, I'm just taking my time here. I've got a funny feeling this will also be a mega video though because, well, obviously you can tell straight forward by the amount of products are obviously on the floor though. It's quite a lot of products there. Uh, oh, I've just burped though because I had a big meal though. But I don't know how big my meal will be like for Christmas day. My goodness. I was just putting in the air anyhow. Let me just try and... So up there, yay, onto the box, and um, we'll take a look at this product here next. Right, let me do a jump cut because I want to sound a lot much more better than before. Oh, that's the wrong command, I suppose. <laughs> I've actually pressed the um, little arrow uh, where you can actually um, take a look at some settings here, which is pretty weird. You can actually um, schedule on how you want your video to be recorded there, but anyways, this product here I'm going to take a look at is something pretty familiar though. I think that's going to 
We press a lot of the bronies here. This is Natasha and Hannah Alicorn Dual Fire Pack. Oh my goodness me. That looks pretty weird though. Actually, it's called Natasha and Hannah Alicorn Dual to Fire Pack, which costs about £8. There's the back of the packaging there. She looks alright though, with that sort of design. And, um,. That's quite nice though, but it's pretty simplistic because you get one box of unit as a castle balcony, a pair of alicorn ponies with names, and a couple of crowns. Now I wonder how these crowns will fit in nicely with these ponies though, let's take a look and see what we've got. Okay, I'm packing, I'm packing, I'm packing. That's just about it, and I'll try and show and take a look what we have there. There's the balcony with those flowers on the front there. This looks really, really nicely detailed. And there's a couple of crowns here for the ponies. I don't know which crown, but um, let's see what we have. Obviously, this pony here is... Oh, that looks like Twilight Bomb Sparkle, if I remember. Obviously, this is very, very nice. Whenever I think about this pony, but... Look at that. Her name is actually... Look at that. Her name is Natasha Twilight Amy Roberts Sparkle. That's such a very long name for a pony, eh? That's gonna make Hasbro pretty much ticked off in the way I tend to look at these types of toys like so, eh? But, um, it's such a very magical sort of toy, though. My oh, goodness, this is like the time when I used to remember Brony... Uh, Bronycon was a thing, though. But, uh, it looks pretty nice, though. That sort of design, I believe, though. Yes, it looks quite nice. You can actually plonk the crown on uh, Twilight Sparkle. Oh my goodness me, eh? If I put it right on top of her, she might wear it or not though. Making sure her corner, her corner is pretty much visible though. Just amongst the flaps though, on that balcony though. Sorry if I'm not showing it properly though, but I just don't want to show myself because if I did show myself I'll be pretty embarrassed though. That's the main thing with the flat toy views, like like if I go ahead and show my face though, if I did some vlogging like I did in August, well it wouldn't be the same for me though. And um I am not gonna put it on there, let me try and let me try and attach it to somewhere there. Maybe try and attach it like so. How does it look? Uh, it's okay. It will do the job, eh? Although it's not that perfect, but um that will do. Uh let's take a look at this one here. This pony here is basically a duplicate of Twilight Sparkle, but this one here is some sort of a very weird colour. It looks more like magenta or purple or pink sort of colour, I believe, though, in that design, obviously, I believe, though. This is Hannah. Obviously, her name is simply called Hannah because, well, there's actually a, a friend of mine called Hannah James. Obviously, though, I should put the surname, though, but maybe I wouldn't because that would probably upset one of these um, students, I believe, though. Sorry if I'm sounding a bit weird though, but um, she also has a crown. Pretty much for the fact that both of these girls are princesses. Very nice designs indeed. I love the colours. Not really a fan actually of pink because um, it's just way too girly though, but obviously the ponies, that's quite a cool exception. If I plunk it next to Twilight, sorry for the social distancing, um, I just say it. Um, removal, obviously, though. <laughs> but nevertheless, these toys are <laughs> it's a bit of a confrontation of Twilight versus Hannah. But anyways, these toys, um, these products that I've made, though, so far, they look very, very nicely detailed in design. Though. I love the fact that I've made this product come to life like so. And I'm just going to put it back as it is. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This product is done. And, um... In fact, I might be able to do a jump cut because I'm going to move on to another just that origami pony toy real soon. Well, obviously I was trying to get this product back into the box so let's try and do it again. 3, 2, 1, and fire! Well, sort of made it, but um, yeah. I caught this one okay, eh? Okay, obviously the last of that origami ponies product is this one here. Now I did a 5 pack of these girls here, this is a 12 pack of the miscellaneous background earth herd ponies obviously in a sense that they're earth ponies because they have no unicorn or 
or Pegasus or features though. It costs about fifteen pounds ninety nine or sixteen pounds. Uh, I don't know why I'm talking quite a bit slowly there, but um, here it is, twelve ponies. He's also got this red writing saying not all ponies are shown as artwork here in this package. So whenever you look at the artwork on the front of this envelope, not all ponies are shown unless if you come in and take it out. Saying open me please. But uh, it looks quite nice though. I wonder what ponies have I remember. I don't know how much I know about this, but I have heard about this TV show when I was pretty much, I would say, 15 years old. Maybe about 11 or 12 years old, if I remember though. But uh, it's quite a very, it was a very popular TV show day for many young children, especially girls and young men, obviously, though. But I'll try and come in and take out what's from the interior. Okay, let's take a look what we have. Obviously, I hope it's not going to be the same ponies, but what's also strange is that look at the way they've been designed. They used to have legs which were pretty much folded there, but they look a lot more hooved now, and uh, they're also a lot more brightly coloured in design. This one here is Cherry Berry, obviously, for the fact that she looks like that in that sort of design, eh? I don't know if I could stand all of the ponies there, but uh, it's quite a very nice design, like so. We've also got this one here, this is Golden Harvest, which looks A-OK -okay for that sort of name though. It's also named as Carrot Top, which is interesting on her butt though, which is very, very weird in that design. Let's take a look at another one. Okay, this one here. Obviously the eyes and the facial designs are pretty much detailed in a very small sort of way. This one here is called Sunny Smiles. I've never heard of a pony called Sunny Smiles. But um, yeah, it looks very interesting, that sort of design here. And it's also got the same cutie mark as Shoeshine. I might go ahead and grab Shoeshine now, which is this one here. Obviously, whenever I think about this design and Sunny Smiles, um, there is there, Shoe Shine. That's a very weird sort of interesting name, though. But um, yeah, I know these uh, ponies are pretty much have got like the same cutie mark. But um, yeah, there's another one here. My goodness, I wonder why these ponies have got like the same cutie mark. I, I wonder what's going on here. Obviously, they've got like the same design as Sweetie Drops or Bonbon. Uh, this one here is called Lilac Lynx, thanks to the colorization of the body, obviously though, except for the eye. Uh, she's doing okay there as well though. And I don't know if I could stand all ponies because of, well, obviously, um, yeah, I think it's pretty much better if I stand all ponies like so. But um, it's going to take a long time though because, well, the ponies are just going to topple over like dominoes though. And my back's hurting because... Well, oh my god, I just can't sit for longer though, but, um, my goodness, I'll try and sit for longer though, but I just can't. Let me move on to another one here. This one here is, uh, Berry Punch, or Berry Shine, whatever we're gonna call her, in the name that you really want to have though. Oh my goodness, her name is actually Berry Shine Punch. What a pretty long name, whenever you think about it, of course, though. It's quite funny, a lot of the pony names are their butts though, which is very, very weird though. Um, particularly with the earth ponies and the unicorn ponies, obviously they Obviously trying to make sure that, um, yeah, just to see the whole pony artwork though, which is really, really nice though. Let's take a look at this um, other purple one here, which looks very similar to Golden Harvest or Carrot Top. And I wonder what her name is. Berry Icicle? That's weird, eh? What? Very icicle, that's very strange, though. Um, obviously, though, because she doesn't have any berries in her kitty mark. Or any icicles, which is very, very weird, though. Looks like a very strange uh, name for a pony, though. And, <laughs> uh oh, looks like I've toppled all the ponies. Well, not really, but I'll try and move on to this one here. This is, um, who's that one there? It's such a very weird design pony, though. Um, Daisy. That's a very weird name, Daisy. Very weird name, of course, though. It's also got the same colour as uh, Cherry Berry or Berry Shine, though. And there's this one here, which in a sense has got the same colour. This one here is called Lily Valley. 
very nice design, eh? Very nice indeed. If I pair this pony here with the other one, that looks very, very nicely detailed. What do you think? That's pretty cool, eh? Let me try and take a look at another one there. This is um, Blueberry Curls. That is a very weird design for a pony like so, eh? And strangely enough, look at that, she's also wearing green. That might be her jumper or her, her sweater, I believe, though. It's such a very weird, unique looking pony design because normally the ponies on this, they're pretty much naked <laughs> in design, eh? But, um, yeah. Well, that's pretty much interesting, eh? It doesn't matter if it's that unnatural to just see a pony wearing a piece of clothing before though. Well, I have seen real horses wear pieces of clothing. Like, I've ever seen a pony or a horse wearing, you know, a three-piece suit. That's a great example though. <laughs> oh my goodness, sorry, I've got a bit of hiccups today, but um, that's a very weird design though. Uh, blueberry uh, curls, that's a very weird though design though. Oh, this next one here. This one here. Oh, this is Apple Top. It's a very interesting design though, and uh, she's got green eyes, she's got a green mane, and the tail as well is also green, and she also has a single apple as her symbol or kinemart, so please don't get offended by this, or please don't confuse apple for their logo like that, because that's a very different one though. And last, but by no means least, is the eponymous da -da 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 -da, Sweetie Drops, or as I call her, Bon Bon pretty much the French word for candy or lollies as you might call them in Australia there you go, there's the name there Sweetie Drops or Bon Bon and um, typical on how she looks like obviously though typical as it sounds especially with that tail there my goodness me and uh, I got a funny feeling I uh, don't know what I might do but uh, it feels like yeah pretty interesting I have to say very interesting looking at her huge range of pony toys and um, I might take a look at the Seagull products next and then the Christmas stuff and maybe that bag right over I would just say it, right over there but um, actually over there I believe though right in front of the mouse but I'm just going to repack those ponies because well pretty much tricky on how I reviewed them but um, obviously the ponies they were lavishly designed they weren't too rough and ready just glad as they were and I'm gonna put them back just as they were goodbye alright now let me just go ahead and move on to the seagulls sorry about the confusion now I was meant to say alrighty then let's move on to the seagulls though but um we have got seven to eight to flap origami flapping with toys and uh, what's quite interesting is that um yes uh, the flip flap origami flapping with toy range must have been heavily focusing on seagulls because what I tend to hear was the eponymous sound of seagulls which obviously sound like this yep that's how I'd normally hear beside the seaside but yes as we all know seagulls have been taking over inland because of rationing well actually after rationing obviously there's quite a lot of seagull themed products particularly the British Wildlife Collection toys which is totally and utterly interesting though uh, especially this one here uh, this wintering herring gull feeding frenzy or should I say feeding transitional flock 12 pack crabby frenzy obviously though and um, I've actually noticed that this product isn't really that um, much of a British Wildlife Collection toy let me pick this one here first because I know it costs about £16.50 but what's strange about this one is it doesn't have anything related to the British Wildlife Collection toy range because as we all know herring gulls are pretty much a British species of seagull or a European or an American species of seagull or an Asian species depending on which part of the world you're in okay I'm done now but um, yes as we all know uh, this product now has got some British Wildlife Collection thingy bobs like the logo there like, oh my goodness me though, which looks like this and that as well there on the front and I'm just glad that this product here is also contains a bit of crabby action as well which in a sense looks pretty much weird though I can't see any info there, which, which is very weird there, I can't see any that's weird, there's another error there, I didn't put 
six crabs. I should have placed down that one there as well though because well that product also contains crabs as well, which is pretty much interesting now. But um yeah. Let me go ahead and unpack this and um see what we have. Now, I've actually made these these sort of products so, uh, in the early part of December when I was self isolating. Um yes, because well, the college had to temporarily close on Thursday, uh, the 26th of November, which was our... Well, we don't actually celebrate Thanksgiving, but the Americans do, obviously, though. And um, Thanksgiving, we had to basically close the school, though, or the college, though. And then um, I had to self isolate though, and um, it wasn't that too bad. In fact, I got a bit of crab action, though, which looks pretty much similar to the other designs, though. Yeah, it looks a bit, bit nicer in design. Okay, so I don't really mind these sort of designs which look like that, I believe. But uh, let's take a look at the herring gulls next because, well, it's very interesting. We've got a transitional period. In fact, all of them are named as herring gulls, but they don't tell you what plumage it is. So obviously, as we all know, the brown face ones are pretty much the non-breeding birds because that's what they would normally look like during autumn and winter and also early spring. Uh, this one here, I don't know what this is, oh it's just a normal herring girl, that's just more, that one there is more non-breeding, I think the one I just held before, I held this one was a, a breeding plumage one, which is a-okay day, and um, in fact I've got a lot of herring girl themed products today, well, because I just hear them so much all the time, whenever I'm around this part of the UK, they've been in the Westlands then, and um, these guys are crazily everywhere there. Maybe I need to photocopy and make more and more seagull products. How about that one? That would be a, a brilliant idea though, just to come in and make as well as many as possible though, because, well, I, I really want to. Okay, that's about it though. My goodness me, the seagull products, they are literally everywhere. Uh. Oh, pardon me though. <laughs> that's pretty much interesting of the side though, but um, yeah. I'm actually going to go ahead and go forward and take a look at the next product though, that's this product done though. Speaking of herring girls, oh that product just went straight through the back there, I might have to go ahead and pick the one up though. Actually I might do a jump cut because I might have to, um, oh sorry keyboard, uh, I'm going to go ahead and basically pick that product up and put it into the box. Okay I'm back now, um, I'm just going to go ahead and take a look at a, uh, and another herring girl product though, which is this one here, it's called the herring girl family roosting coastal feast swap pack, 18 pounds 99, 19 pounds obviously though, I'm sure I'll say one pence off, 19 pounds, and uh, just goes to show you that um, the amount of these products though, they're pretty much expensive though, and I've got a funny feeling that a lot of the seagull products I take look now, I just can't believe there's a resurgence of how freaking expensive the prices are, when are these products are going to go ahead and just come back? down as long as the pandemic is basically curbed and gone from now on though. But I just got a funny feeling that um, yeah we are literally in tier 3 now which is pretty much well disappointing now but I heard that London's on tier 4 particularly the southeastern parts of England and um, got a funny feeling that um, sadly well not so funny feeling though I'm um, living in London though to celebrate Christmas well it's becoming well, freaking impossible now because of the virus that we're having now. Okay, so, obviously we've got a trio of starfish, which obviously look like these, obviously though. And we've also got some sardines. We just had a sneeze in the background. But, um, I don't know about you, but this is actually quite nice to hear though. In fact, yeah, it doesn't look too bad though. I think I prefer these designs over the other first sightings I actually had a look at that Western Week egret product though because well if there was a fault like that it would have been much more highly detailed and um, yeah it does sound pretty nice to hear compliments like that though but anyways let's take a look at what we have there this is one of the juvenile herring girls oh it's the first winter didn't realize they were pretty much first winter herring girls I, until I looked at right now eh and um, they look sort of I would just say it's simplified though, eh, in, in terms of designs like that one, eh? Very weird. But uh, nevertheless, they look quite nice to see and look at. 
Okay, and I've got a funny feeling. It looks so, so nice, though. And uh, there's the name here, First Winter Herring Girl. And we've got some non-breeding herring girls, which... Obviously, you know, having three non-breeding herring girls, it's very, very similar to the um, first product with the crabs and the breeding plumage adult herring girls. And um, there's that one here as well. It's got that same design there, the head. And I've actually noticed this one's female, that's weird, eh? That's very weird, I didn't expect that to have a bit of eyelashes though, she looks pretty interesting. And it's also very worthy to note that the male herring girls are a lot more larger but also a lot more heavier than the female herring girls themselves. Okay, let me throw it into that box there. Oh, just went straight through the clock there. Didn't realise that, but um, let me go ahead and just put it back as it was. Okay, let me just do a jump cut. Jump! Okay, I'm back now after drinking a bit of water. I've just fit the clock right perfectly though, like so. And there's a bit of proof to you. Nicely snugly fit like so. Okay, so I'm just going to take a look at a, another herring gold thing product there. Let me grab this one here. It's the fourth winter. Sub up flock, fishy feeding frenzy, 12 packs, 16 pounds 99 or 17 pounds. There's the back of the packaging. There you go. Six of both the fishies and the birds themselves. Now I love those wing poses which look like that. Okay. And yes, these guys are pretty much a transitional period from being a juvenile to an adult. Well, obviously you don't. Let me just take a look what we have now. Okay, let's see what we have. There's the seagulls. And there are the little fishies. In fact, the fishies that you can see there, they're pretty much based on baby pike. And if you don't know what pike are, they're basically freshwater fish. They yeah, look really, really nice though in these sort of designs though. Which looks pretty much A-OK, -okay, I have to say, I believe though. But, um, yeah, I really don't mind these designs, actually, I suppose, eh? It sort of looks really nice though. Even this one here too, which is interesting. Let me take a look at the sub-adult Helen girls. Um, they look pretty much nicely designed, like so. And um, it's got brown designs on the wing there, these sort of brown dirtiness uh, on the wings on each side, which look like so. Okay, which looks very, very nice. There's the black tail end. And there's the name, Sup Out Herring Girl. Oh, yeah. Without being a bit too naughty, obviously these guys are pretty much cool to look at though. And uh, I've got a funny feeling, um, these guys are pretty much eponymous. And uh, yes, they look very, very nice though. Eponymous of the seaside for the fact that it's their raucous cars and also their appearance as well though. And uh, it looks quite nice. I love designs like that one, eh? I, I got, I've got a funny feeling. Uh, the herring girls, I pretty much have nailed it's such a cool design to look at though. Which is pretty much interesting now. It's quite funny that the seagull populations there in the flip flap universe, they're increasing madly. Like, they're literally... Oh my goodness, but their populations... They're, there's so many seagulls in this country here. Like, obviously, I don't know what it is, but I've got a funny feeling. Seagulls inland, sounds very absurd though, but... It's literally our fault, even mine. Because obviously what we humans have done is that we've thrown food out. And what that meant was, was that fishing stocks declined. And uh, after rationing during the, you know, let's just say the Second World War, seagulls have started to eat a lot more food, something other than seafood or fish. And that's how seagulls have colonized inland, particularly in landfills, which in a sense sounds like a very, a very, very dirty place though, as always as per usual though. And as we all know, just to let you know, many of the products that we can see here have got the little coronavirus symbol there. Obviously it's because of the fact that these products have been made during 2020, and I'm lucky I didn't hit that clock though. But um, yeah, let me just go ahead and move on to this product here. The third wintering herring girl feeding frenzy, or should I say, third winter herring girl flock feeding frenzy, 12 pack, 17 pounds, no five, very similar to the other product that I've looked at though before, which was also 17 pounds, 95. 
Obviously, it comes with some seagulls, which are in their third winter plumage. Obviously, herring gulls. And we've got some starfish, which are purple in colour. And some fish. Obviously, the fish look more like carp. Okay, so because of their magic carp like appearance, which is interesting, though. And let me go ahead and unpack this. Got a funny feeling the herring gull populations, they're literally increasing like mad. Okay, so there we are, there's the third winter herring gull, which looks like so. Very nice uh, design though. And also very, very weird and odd looking colorization here. Not just design, but also colorization because you would normally associate a seagull to have either a pair of yellow legs and a beak or maybe like pink legs and a yellow beak or even red as well or black you'd normally associate that though but that colorization seems odd but that's actually very nice so it's such a very interesting sort of color here I believe you got brown there on the top with some big black wing tips which look like that all these guys there they've been colored in with pencils and crayons because if there was any such things as um, felt tip pen and marker designs there, well, well, detailings like that would probably deteriorate the birds. Uh, as always as I can sound like this though, as proofful as I am though, this one's a bit, I would just say a bit useless to fly though. Well, obviously I'm just going to fold the back side to side though. And um, it's actually talking in a very Pretty much sloppy but funny way though. But um, yeah, it looks very, very nice though. Let's take a look at the fish. I believe they're carp. And uh, they don't look too bad. There's the other carp there, which looks like this. And uh, there's some starfishies, which obviously have a purple overside and an underside which is yellow. And um, they've all got the name Third Winter Herring Girl, which looks like that. Obviously, though, but you know what? It doesn't look too bad as I would normally expect, though. Uh, this one here has got some darker wingtips, a lovely colorization, though, on these um, seagulls, though. Even this one here. That looks very, really, really nice. Okay, those ones there are pretty much, as I would say here, done. And I'm just going to repack the packaging like so. Maybe one great tip in the future is maybe not trying. Throw the product straight into that box there, but more like just leave them like so and just put them back into the box as normal as I would normally do. But because I'm making this video at the moment though, I'm just going to go ahead and do that like so. Oh, that's weird. I just went straight right in front of the boxes, I believe. Though. Let me try and take a look at another flip up origami flapping bits putter here. Here's the first one to Herring Girl Fishing Fledgings. Flocking Feeding Frenzy 12 pack, 19 pounds. There's the back of the packaging here. Oh, well, there's a juvenile herring girl doing a long call. And we've got some magic cups there. I wonder what's going on with. Oh, sorry, hang on. We've got a little tiny uh, fish here. Uh, I just need to jump cut for a while though because I feel like I must have made a mistake. Well, I actually noticed that I actually left one of the other fishies from that um, packaging I've just looked at there, or should I say product there, it was the third winter herring girls. Now we're looking at the first winter herring girl fishing fledglings flocking feeding frenzy 12 pack, which costs about 19 pounds. And I'm just going to go ahead and unpack this. That's strange. That herring girl looks more like a freaking owl than just a seagull. I mean, i got a funny feeling these guys must have been designed after, well, freaking wing girl out of Pokemon. I got a funny feeling that it was one of the main reasons why I actually adore Wing Girl as the best Pokemon because of that sort of weird design that looks more like a very weird aesthetic seagull than a realistic one or abstract one I would say that's a much better word though it's such a very weird sort of design it looks like I just snipped one of its um, rips though because well I don't like rippings on flip like origami toys because it would look like that the toy would have been broken though but nevertheless it's nice to have condition like so it's nice to have a condition um like that though like so but not as nice as this one here which in a sense is a much better condition because well 
everything on this bird looks pretty much fixed today. Eh? Okay, so, ooh, look how dark and black looking. Looks very even more black looking, those sort of big wingtips. So, I like on these, um, girls. Yep, it's the first winter. And that one there is also a first winter here, yeah, okay? I love the designs like that. Lovely black tail ends. And, um, yeah, it looks very nice actually though. It feels like we're getting a lot more larger seagulls than the small ones, like the black headed girls. Which is very strange. Here is one of the cobs. In fact, I've got, I'm just going to show you all the six um, cobs, which look like magic carp. Such a very weird design, eh? If I flip them over into the other side, eh? Oh my goodness, me! You know what? They obviously sort of look like they're um, pretty soon. That's their designs, which normally look like that. Okay, so that's a very weird design. In fact, it's actually pretty common for a design like that. Weird, but common. Well, it's actually a bit blatantly boring, though. But um, that's okay. So as I. I think the main gripe here is pretty much the high price. If only when summer comes back, heating up things like so, like if we go ahead and turn things hotter again in the summer, well, that should be fine. But currently we're in freaking winter and I hate freaking winter because it's just too cold for me today. But anyways, let's take a look at this one here. This is a seagulls versus red fox fishing and mobbing flock twilight pack. £17.95. There's the back of the packaging here. We can see a red fox. Well, it looks like it's carrying a fish being chased by a lesser black back gull. And there's a couple of herring gulls on the top here. Which looks very interesting there. And I'm going to go ahead and unpack this. We've got some basculin like fish there. I don't know why Pokemon has been such a thing accustomed to. Well, let's look at that product though. Oh, let's look at the fox here. That fox looks like a combination of Vulpix from the Pokemon franchise and Miles Tail Prower. Oh, sorry, Miles Tower's Prower from Sonic the Hedgehog. My goodness me, that's a very interesting color combination though. Uh, blue and orange, reddish orange color, I believe though. It's a very nice looking design. Okay, so it looks very, very cool, but there's nothing licensed on this product though, which is disappointing. I wonder why a lot of the flip flap products these days, they're just lost. I think that's pretty much the things I tend to say eh, about flip flap products. They lost everything and what they used to have. Like, they have no losses in info, and uh, nothing like, you know, year dates and stuff, but um, that's pretty much how flip flap behaves like so. Eh? Um, anyways, there's the fishies there, which in a sense they look like Basculin from the Pokemon franchise. Those sort of decals like that, they have blue or red markings, especially on the eyes. And uh, it sort of looks interesting, obviously. I've seen seagulls mob foxes before though. Now let's take a look at the lesser black back. I don't know if it's like, obviously, it's obviously the wrong shade of grey because they normally like, you know, a slightish grey sort of colour though, but um, yeah, sort of not really that realistic though. Uh, let me take a look at the herring girl, which in a sense is a lot more paler. Oh, this one looks pretty much on how a herring girl would look like though. Let's take a look at the other lesser black back. I think it's a lesser black back because it's got those yellow feet at the back. And another clue about lesser black back girls is that they've actually got a very different wing tip pattern. They've actually got like little small white windows on the wing edge. And um, yeah. That's a very good clue here, and also herring girls tend to be a lot more bulkier than the lesser black back girls, which in the sense that the lesser black back girls tend to be a lot more slimmer, a lot more slightly elegant, and well, let's just say less bulky in design. Though I've actually got a funny feeling there's actually a lot more lesser black back girl action than the herring girls, which in a sense that lesser black backs tend to breed a lot more inland than than herring gulls, which is pretty much interesting to hear, but um, yeah, which is pretty much the real norm of these types of gulls, eh? My goodness me, I've actually got a lot more herring gull products to come up in future videos, which will be quite interesting, but also blatantly boring yet annoying 
at all times because, well, we all know seagulls are very annoying, especially in the UK, inland. Here's our next product here, wintering lesser black back gold feeding frenzy twop hat, which costs about freaking 18 pounds. Here's the back of the packaging there, and as you can see, oh, there's a seagull staring into your souls. And he was like, oh my goodness me, I'm going to kill you and I'm going to put you into your next misery after you. I, I failed you from your next meal of fish and chips. And there's another one there. Looks like he's a bit cross-eyed, a bit derped, more like, because he's pulling up a very funny face there. And there's that... Oh! Oh my goodness me, that pose! That sort of design of the seagull doing that sort of sort of weird looking wing pose actually reminds me of the Hollister logo that you find in hoodies and pieces of clothing like that there. Right? That looks very familiar though. And the fish that you get are like little anchovies, you know, little anchovies that you find in the sea alongside of sardines. That looks very interesting. Actually reminds me of the anchovies from Spongebob, which looks pretty much interesting. I would say Spongebob Squarepants, that's the TV show that I tend to remember though, recently though. And it looks quite cool. And uh, here's the other one there. It's really good though. Oh my goodness, i got a funny feeling these guys are pretty much nicely detailed though. They're like the real looking um, versions of the Spongebob versions. The Spongebob characters though. Hey. You like my Krabby Party? No, I didn't, you idiot. Anyways, so I'm just going to go ahead and take a look at the Lesser Blackback Gulls. Got a funny feeling we're getting a huge amount of Sega activities. Um, oh, I've actually noticed that this one here actually is a bit broken, though. If you, oh my goodness me, there's a bit of a problem here with this one here. Uh, this section here is a bit broken, it's got a bit of a bit of a rip there, there's a bit of a hole here. There's a hole here. I don't know about you, but this one here looks like a bit broken though. But normally if it's that toy is that, you know, one of the things that, therefore, I kind of see what's going on, what's sort of disappointing is that some of the toys that, uh, like, you know, the ones which are broken or pretty much mismatched in boxes, and what I should do is basically um, try and basically throw this one away and basically um, make a replacement, I suppose, eh? Like, um, if I find stuff which has faults in the factory there, so I might go ahead and make another one. Maybe I'll show you in another video though, I'll try and make another one of these seagulls there, I'll put it away though, into that packaging like so. And because I've already just destroyed one seagull though, I'm just going to make another one. Um, hopefully though, from, hopefully in another video on my, when I am ready to basically be ready to make like, toys in another time I believe though, but yeah, I'm just going to put it away, not at the box, but I'm just going to leave it somewhere there because I need to Try and basically make another seagull there, which is the lesser black back. Uh, hopefully you might showcase that one in another video there. This one here is the Australian Pacific Gull Adult and Juvenile Dual Flop Top Pack. Which is interesting, £20. There's the back of the packaging here. Which looks okay. There's quite a lot of info there. The birds are named separately. The white birds are the adults and the brown ones are the juveniles. Which is very interesting reading there. It's also got... Oh, there's a very weird reading here. It says the juvenile girls are now updated with new wing detailings on their inner wings. Let's see if it's true. 20 pounds. I've also noticed that Pacific girls actually have grey free. I don't even realise that. That's so weird, eh? Okay, here are the Pacific girls, And look at that. Look at the wing tips on the juveniles. They look pretty much, well, sort of realistic if you ask me, eh? To me, they look pretty nicely and... Um, Design though, I love the way that these seagulls are pretty much designed as the way they are. There's the um, adults here. They all look like that. Sort of a fully blackish sort of colorization there with the black tail end. Like so, there's the name Pacific Gull. And there's the name Juvenile Pacific Gull. Very nice though, you can loads and loads of these guys here. Oh my goodness, man, is a very huge influx of seagulls there, loads and loads of birds here, aren't they? That's therefore quite amazing, eh? Oh my goodness me. That is a lot of freaking seagulls here, eh? That is quite a lot of these guys everywhere. They're everywhere. My goodness, I've got a funny feeling. I must have made these recently, though, eh? More and more recent, and um, 
I love the black detailings on the wings like that thing. Yeah, they look like that. Okay, so... Looks pretty nice though. Uh, sorry I didn't show you the birds quite that way, eh? but um... Yeah. Looks very really nice, and there's the adult here as well. Big looking eyes as well. I love that black and detailing like so. My goodness me, uh, this is actually really, really cool though, seeing a huge variety of uh, flip up origami flapping with toys. And uh, I don't know how rough and ready I am there, but um, it looks pretty nice though. I love the um, fully black detailings on the wings though. Really awesome. And I got a funny feeling these guys are from Australia though, and um, yeah, they look really, really cool though. Sadly, these guys are not as common as the um, Silver Girl, which is much more of a smaller species of seagull in Australia, and is like a close relative of the black headed girl. But the other large species of girl, that is also found in Australia, but has actually been self introduced, is the Kelp Girl. And I um, actually made a fair bit of Kelp Girl product, I might take a look at that in another video though, but um, yeah, the Pacific Girl. I actually love how nicely detailed the eyes are, especially this one here. It's got a very nice looking expressional sort of eye that looks like it's a bit worried though. And this one's a bit cheerful though. It looks like it's being a bit sneaky though, I believe though. Like all seagulls are. And um, yeah, that's pretty much about it though. And I actually love how nicely detailed the Pacific girls are. I love how fully black the wings are. It looks so, so, well, obviously not too realistic, but kind of or sort of realistic though, which is very interesting to say. Though. It's like a mix between something a bit cartoony and a bit realistic though. Something very similar on how Disney does animations and stuff like that. Though. Okay, put all the seagulls inside though. Oh my god, that is pretty much tough though to fit every single seagull inside though. Get in here! I'm just gonna put it away. Yay! I'm just glad I'm just reviewing quite a few with that product now. Okay, the seagulls are pretty much done. Let me do a jump cut. Okay, just to finish off the video here, we've got some pieces of merchandise for Christmas and also something pretty much um, one of the first souvenir items I've also found though. This one here. It's this um, Super Australian Roo sort of product here because I was into Australia. At that time though, Lloyd Fangaroo is quite a it's quite a very nice looking design of that kangaroo though. I love the fact that it looks pretty nice though. Although it says artwork by Ivan Lee, it's a bit disappointing though because I could have added a lot more detailing in that. I also have noticed that the um, artwork isn't really that great though because it's not really that great though because there's a lot of snoppiness though and what's quite sloppy is, is that there's quite a lot of line detailing there. So much line, linear detailing like so. But uh, the name Lord Fangaroo is really, really cool. Super Australian Roos. That's a cool pun, eh? Created or oh, artwork by Ivan Lee. It's quite a very interesting designer, and um, the reason why I created this sort of designer because when I was pretty much young, I was uh, into Legend and Jagger. You know? Now, Legend and Jagger was such a cool thing, eh? Because, well, I used to remember watching that show as a kid, day eh? Or a teenager. And it was pretty much cool, though. So I did a mashup with. Uh, Lord Garmadon as a kangaroo though because I didn't like the head design which was from 2014 and that's why I made that sort of design though into this but I'm just glad that the Legend and Jagger movie has made a very fantastic redesign of the character um, obviously it's a much better uh, how would you say it, interpretation or a much better representation of that character from Legend and Jagger and mind you the film was okay it was good though but I don't know, it doesn't have the charm as what I'd normally expect to have films of well, back in the good old days before well, it was released day, but it's quite a nice bag day might turn it around day, there's no artwork at the back here as I just said earlier day uh, but it looks it looks good, it looks okay day and it looks very very nice day and um, yeah really really good detailing like so Okay, I'm just going to put that bag away there, and I might take with some Christmas cards. Now, I know Christmas is going to be very, very different because, well, it's obviously COVID and stuff, though. Um, let's look what we have here. Tinsel light and a star of delight. Well, the star's not going to be in delight today, though, because, well, COVID has smothered everything, you know, and um, 
Well, it is basically broken people's hearts today. Um, there's what we have there. That's pretty much typical when you would find Christmas cards like so. And what's quite funny is, is that this product here is a 2021 product. So that may or may not be like the first Christmas 2021 product. That's very interesting. It's also got a stocking there at the back there. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Well, I should be celebrating Christmas for only just a short time because of, well, the virus is still there and um, we're still in a very diabolical situation here at the moment, though. And this card here, oh, look at this, it's CD Link. I wonder what's for Christmas dinner. Oh, boy, I'm so hungry, I can eat an Octorok. <laughs> oh, my goodness me. Uh, let's look at what we have. Oh boy, I'm so jolly, I want something cool for a very merry Christmas. Well, we can't have that because, well, it's because of COVID-19. But um, here we are, there's some of the cool features that you can do, like all cards do. I mean, it doesn't feel as perfect as... It doesn't feel like it's... Uh, I don't know about this card, but... Um, this one here sounds pretty much in how I would expect to feel a card like so. But this one here is a... Bit of a slimmer sort of card. I don't feel like it's it doesn't have that sort of quality you'd find on typical cards, which is interesting. And look at this. What it says here? It says, "Yeah, that old curve is no match for Christmas." Well, it's up to Link. CDR Link. Oh my goodness, I love that design of Link. If only from next year's Christmas, I'll make a whole bunch of elves that look like that, and also that design there. And don't get me wrong, that is one of the best designs ever for a Christmas themed elf. I love this design so much though. Now I know I love Link so much though, but that design is pretty much one I'm obviously familiar with because of YouTube poop. So, sorry for the rough and readiness in this video though at the start though because, well, obviously the filming was quite rough though because well, I wasn't angling towards um, what I was supposed to be doing there, but um, the amount of products so far, they were great. They were pretty much awesome. And I got a funny feeling uh, it's been like a long time on my channel, though, and in fact, I might try and have a bit of a very, very, very long saying for pretty much a while, though, before I feel like I'm going to end this video like so. Well, anyways, I think that's about it in this video, though. And um, I'm really sorry for taking so long to produce videos like this on my YouTube channel because, well, obviously I was at residential um, college there and I got a funny feeling that, oh my goodness me, whenever I'm, you know, I got a funny feeling that whenever I am at a different place of some sort though, away from home, uh, it doesn't feel the same though. And I'm very sorry for taking so long on my YouTube channel though for pretty much a long, long time though because, well, obviously I... As I was at residential college, unfortunately, um, it's not the same. Obviously, I can't make videos here because, well, obviously, if I was going to be making videos at college, well, people are pretty much going to get offended, though, and what I actually make, though. Anyways, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm very sorry for taking so long to produce this video, and I'm also very sorry for taking so long without making content on YouTube for pretty much a long, long time now. So, anyways, I hope you've enjoyed this video. As always, thanks so much for watching, and bye for now.